This is the Doubles Only Tennis Podcast, where you learn the best tips and strategies in the world to help you become a smarter, more effective tennis player. You'll hear interviews with pro tour doubles players and coaches, including easy to use lessons to improve your game and win more matches. My name is Will Bocek, founder of the Tennis Tribe, doubles strategy coach, and host of the show. Today's episode is a conversation from uh, Toronto at the Canadian Open with Sonia Mirza and Hanlon Walsh, uh, one of our doubles writers who was uh, in Toronto with me. And if you don't know Sonia uh, and you're a doubles fan, you probably should. Um, Sonia is a six-time Grand Slam doubles champion. She's one of the best WTA doubles players of the last uh, 10 to 15 years. And she used to be a great singles player as well. Um, I believe she was in the top 20. Uh, and she's a, a really an icon in India where she's from. Uh, she has almost as many Twitter followers and Instagram followers as Serena Williams, uh, to give you some perspective. Uh, so in this conversation, I ask her a couple of strategy questions. Um, it's a very brief conversation because she's so busy. Um, she only had about 10 or 10 minutes or so um, to sit down with us. But uh, I ask her, what's it like playing with uh, singles players versus doubles players? So at the Canadian Open, she was playing with uh, Madison Keys, and they did knock out the top seeds, um, Veronica Kudermatova and Elise Mertens in the tournament, which was a fantastic match uh, that I got to watch. Um, Hanlon asked her about her career playing with Martina Hingis, uh, things like that. Um, I also touch on mixed versus women's double strategy uh, and a few other topics as well. Um, so this is a, a really fun conversation, um, very short, uh, kind of brief episode, um, but I think you will uh, enjoy it and get a lot out of it. And definitely, if you get a chance to watch Sonia, um, she mentioned retirement, so she might be retiring in the next year or so. Um, we will see. But if you get a chance to watch her, definitely do so because she is a, a fantastic player. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. Uh, today, I have Sonia Mirza on, a six-time Grand Slam doubles champion. Sonia, welcome. Thank you. So I wanted to start, um, you know, I was doing my basic research uh, before we chatted with you, and um, Serena Williams has 11 million Twitter followers, and you're just behind her at 9 million. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> so that tells me that India must really love their doubles. Yeah, and I think they really love their stars, really, and we're lucky we come from a country of 1.2 billion people. So yeah, that helps as well. Have, uh, the numbers, um, but no, I think that we obviously have been um, really good in doubles, but, um, you know, with uh, Leander and Mahesh obviously being number one in the world mm -hmm. a bunch of years ago, but to have, to, to have a woman... Um, over there, I think was very exciting, obviously, and I get a lot of love from my country. Yeah, awesome. Um, so you're here in Toronto. Uh, you just knocked out the number one seed yesterday in a very uh, competitive match, um, and you're playing with Madison Keys. Uh, I wanted to ask, what's it like playing with Madison since she's more of a singles player? And then just in general, what's it like playing with singles players versus someone? Um, well... Are you, like, guess, coaching a little more? <laughs> no, I'm not. But, like, uh, the thing is, like, first of all, it was a last-minute thing because Lucy got hurt in Washington, who I was supposed mm -hmm. to play with. And then we obviously had to um, – it was – you know, I asked Madison. I was like, hey, look, do you want to play? And she was like, okay. I mean, we're good friends as well. So we're like yeah. – I was like, oh, come on, play with me before I retire. Like, let's play one week <laughs> at least. Um, that was one. And then secondly, um, I – you know, like obviously playing a high level of singles for a bunch of years of my life, I kind of get that singles mentality on the doubles court, I mm -hmm. think. So it's pretty simple-ish um, for me to understand like, why she is standing in the corner and not taking the middle. Like, I get it because I've right. obviously played a number of years of singles for a long time. Yeah. Um, so, but, like, she'll, she's really cool. Like, she'll, you know, ask. I mean, she hits the ball so big, it really doesn't matter what else she's doing. <laughs> yeah. She's, like, when she smacks it, it stays hit. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the fast balls, like, a couple of points yesterday, like on set point, the backhand line. I don't know how much you guys watched, but like, I mean, you know, like 
stuff like that. I mean, it's great to watch and she's yeah. young. I've known her for a long time. So we're not really coaching, but yeah, I mean, she does ask me. Obviously, I am older than her and I've had a little bit more experience in doubles. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've had a lot of great partners throughout your career, um, but I think the one that sticks out to me is Martina Hingis and the run that y'all had from you know 2015 to 2016. What was that experience like playing with Hingis during that time? Well, I think by far we both say this to about each other that we were each other's best partners. I mean, we cannot <laughs> not say that we didn't lose a match for like six months. I think um, starting U.S. Open in two thousand and fifteen to like March of two thousand and sixteen. That's basically six months of like forty plus matches. I mean, it was you know the things we were able to achieve with each other was. Um, more than we could have imagined, I'll be honest. I mean, nobody thinks that you're not going to lose for 42 matches or 43 matches in a row. Like, that's just not something that there's no, that's not really a goal of anybody's, you know. But we were able to, like, push our limits and get the best out of each other on the court. And I think that um, I've, um, before she retired that first time, like, we played a lot of singles matches against each other. And, you know, we, we always had really good matches, like, regardless of who won. I think it was, like, 3-2. I don't know what the what the score is between us. But, like, we had some great matches. Three sets in L.A., Dubai, um, you know, Seoul. Like, we played everywhere. And it was obviously great to have her on my side because, like, the way she sees the court is probably the best person that I've ever played with. I mean, she just knows where the ball is going to come before the ball is actually hit. And her obviously, that's her biggest strength. And the understanding of the court is just incredible. And with um, because she doesn't have that much power, she obviously makes up with that anticipation that she has, um, you know. And I think just together under pressure, we were really, really good. And that's why we were winning so much, to be honest. Talk a little bit about uh, mixed doubles. You have three uh, Grand Slams and mixed as well. How does your strategy or mindset change, if at all, from women's to mixed doubles? It doesn't really change, but I mean, it's a little different because obviously there's shorter points in mixed and mm -hmm. my biggest strength is my return. And I think maybe that's why I've had, uh, you know, decent success in mixed because I'm able to return the guy's serve, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is probably the hardest part about mixed is when you're playing guys who are serving over 200 and you're like yeah. kind of. So, like, I find it hard to play guys who are lefty and, like, are, you know, like, faking their toss because, like, yeah. you know, so for me... I think um, everyone has trouble with that, Yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> I know, but, like, I, I hate that. Like, when they fake the toss, like, it's yeah. just... Um, because that's where I kind of read the serve, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, but I think that, like, I just feel that... I don't really change how I play. I just feel like it's a little bit... The dynamic is just a little different. You're not into, like... 10-ball cross-court rallies, right? I mean, that's sure. not happening in mix, so. Who has been um, some of, one of your or some of your toughest doubles opponents over the years, whether it's a team that sticks out or a few players that you played with in, you know, several matches? Um, I think, um, I, I think probably Vesnina Makarova were one of them. Um, and Bethany Maddox-Sands and Safarova. I think it was the, the you know, the three of us were always kind of fighting for that top spot as a team. And um, we've played a lot of like, you know, we played the Wimbledon final against Vesnina Makarova. And like, and obviously at that time, Lucy and um, Andy, I guess, Lavachkova, Radetzka, they were a really top team. Mm -hmm. We remember playing one final against them. So I think these were the three or four teams. It's tough to name one. Yeah. And you played several times with Vesnina yeah, and exactly. Maddox Hands also on yeah, the same side of the exactly. court. Exactly. So like, it was just. It's so hard for me to say, okay, this was the toughest. But, like, I mean, these teams were the ones that obviously, um, yeah, I think stood out. Yeah. Uh, so a strategy question here. Do, do you feel like when you're out on the court, is it more important for you to attack an opponent's weakness or play to your own strength? Both. I mean, um, of course, at the end of the day, if you're not doing your basics and your strengths well enough, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because everybody's a good enough tennis player. Nobody has that big weakness that if you're not going to play to your strength, that their weakness is just going, their weakness, quote unquote, is just going to break down. Like, sure. I mean, you know, we're not in that stage. We're the best tennis players in the, in the world. So obviously everybody knows how to hit a forehand and backhand. It's just 
what, who misses like one extra forehand or one extra yeah. backhand at a certain point of time or under pressure. Yeah, absolutely. but so I think it's a both, mm-hmm. and I think it's important to obviously understand what the opponent's weakness is, but like still kind of be true to yourself on the other side of the net and mm-hmm. still try to, you know, um, yeah, play play to your strength as well. Let me um, let me try to ask that in a different way as well. So. If it's a, a big, let's say it's a big no-add point, right, and you're serving, yeah. and I don't know what ser- serve you prefer, if it's wide or tee or whatever. I but... can't tell you on podcast. I'm still playing. I'll tell you after I retire. Okay. But, okay. okay. We might have to come back to this question. But let, let, let's assume that it's the wide serve in the deuce court. Right. But the opponent has a really strong forehand return, so it's better to serve tee to them. On that deuce point, do you decide to, I'm going with my strength regardless or... It, it just, just depends. There's yeah. nobody, uh, like if I'm playing Madison Keys, I'm not going to her forehand, yeah. right? I mean, like, I'm that, that, that strength that's is just, too strong. Yeah, like, because that's just, yeah. I mean, like, if somebody's playing me, why would they want to go to my forehand? I mean, that's not something that, yeah. you know, so I mean, I think that what happens is that under pressure, um, the weakness that you have, any mm-hmm. tennis player, has a tendency of breaking down more, sure. right? So like in a general ball, like somebody will hit a great forehand, but that's probably not their best shot. But mm-hmm. on a deuce point at five all, if that's going to decide, you know, who's going to serve for the match, then, you know, you got to go to their weakness because sure. hopefully your serve is not that bad on the tee. <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay. That's, that's, uh, that's the answer I was looking for. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I know you need to run in a few. Um, let's do two more questions. Are there any players, uh, whether in women's doubles or mixed doubles, who you haven't gotten to play with yet that you would like to? With, like on the same side? On the same side, yep. Yeah. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> who would be your dream uh, mixed doubles partner and women's doubles partner? My dream mixed doubles partner? Well, I've actually played mixed with Roger. I was going to say Roger, but I've played a league mixed. Um, maybe Andy Murray. Mm. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. And uh, I played against him, though, at the Olympics oh, yeah. in 2016. And Laura yeah. No, not or... Laura and him. We beat them. Uh, him and Heather. Oh, that's right. We beat yeah, them in, the in Rio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They won the, the medal in London. Uh, yeah, so probably Andy. And in women's doubles, I mean, I'm going to go with Serena. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys you guys would be a good team. <laughs> it's a timely choice. Yeah. Um, so, last question. Uh, how do we make doubles more popular? Well, I think there's a bunch of things that need to be done. Uh, mm-hmm. First of all, there needs to be a lot more publicity around doubles. That's the first thing that needs to happen. Like, when you go to a tournament um, and you see banners of players, there needs to be banners of the top doubles players, too. Just the way there's, like, 16 seeds, then yeah. there's got to be at least four of the top teams, you mm-hmm. know? So that's one. I think that people see, I mean, every, the two matches we've played, we've had a full crowd, you know? So obviously people like to watch doubles and because they like to play doubles because most people in the world play doubles, Mm -hmm. you know, they don't really go and grind three hour of singles, like in a club, like in the morning, they go and play doubles. So they connect with that more anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, Secondly, I think, yeah, I think it is important to have doubles matches on big courts on prime time. Um, I'm not saying take it away from a singles match at 7 p.m., but like, sure, sure, have a doubles match. And some tournaments do it, you know, and they get great crowds for it. Right. I mean, uh, Martina and I, when we played, we had full packed crowds almost everywhere we played. And we played on big courts a lot of the times. And that shows you because at that time, doubles was really popular for Mm -hmm. those few years when all these top girls were playing, you know? So I think it's important to, like, keep... And it's not a one-week or a two-week process. It Mm -hmm. is a process that's going to take a few years, but, like, you've got to do it. It's the same thing that people talk about. Are we going to promote just the top three people in the singles or are we going to promote the 20, you know? Because if what happens when those top three retire? Like, what's going to happen? It's going to be a void. So it's the same way. Yeah. So it's going to take time. And I think obviously more on TV, right? I mean, TV time. I think Tennis TV does a pretty decent job with, show, with showing at least the later stage of doubles. But like, mm-hmm. 
you got to show some doubles because people want to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they absolutely do. Yeah. Um, I have a hundred other questions I'd love to ask you, <laughs> but I know you need to run. Um, so thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, you're welcome. That was fun. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. If you're a doubles player, you'll love our weekly strategy newsletter. Every Thursday, I send you my best doubles tips, tactics, and strategies that you can use in your very next match. And when you sign up, I'll also send you a free 20 page ebook that has my favorite doubles tactics for forcing errors and getting more easy volleys at the net. Go to thetennistribe.com newsletter to sign up now.